Patrick Chan is a three-time figure skating world champion and three-time Olympian, including a gold medal in Pyeongchang. And Vicky Hall is a sports writer. Tokyo was the sixth games that she covered. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Thanks, Ian. Thanks for having us. Now, Patrick, you are a member of that select group of Olympic medalists. So, so let me start by asking you this. Uh, what would you choose as a, a highlight for you from the Tokyo Games? So many to choose from. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the fact, number one, is that 18 of the medals of the 24 were won by women. Uh, I think that's such a great representation of Canada um, and hopefully inspires other young girls to... Uh, reach for the stars and go to the Olympics. And um, oh gosh, Quinn being, I think, the first openly trans transgender Olympic medalist, uh, gold medalist, I think that's a huge highlight that uh, needs to be talked about. Um, and then, of course, Andre de Grasse, how exciting was that 200 meters? Now, Andre de Grasse, a multiple Olympic medalist in just two games, but then finally in the 200 meters, Patrick, getting his gold medal. Um, and, and I think as you saw that, all of his uh, wins, but particularly the gold medal, you kind of reflected on your reaction one of the times well, when, when you won silver, right? Absolutely. I mean, uh, watching Andre win actually the bronze in the 100 meter and seeing how ecstatic and energized he was, it just made me reflect on, on my own results at the Olympics and uh, kind of realizing I would, might have been a little too hard on myself and I should have just been really enjoying the moment, no matter the color of the medal. And uh, he took that energy to, to the 200 meters and uh, got what he came for. Vicky, what about you? What was uh, one of your Tokyo highlights? I think Damian Warner, I mean, to become the gold medalist in the decathlon that is the ultimate test of an athlete so for a canadian to be the decathlon gold champ gold medalist i can't think of anything more incredible than that and you know what evan dunphy in the race walk it's not the most popular event but that guy has been walking the seawall in vancouver forever he came so close in rio and got fourth place he could have challenged that against the japanese athlete as he was bumped but Evan said he didn't want to win that way. And then to come back five years later and win his bronze, to me, that was as precious as any gold Canada's got at this Games. I'm glad you mentioned Evan because he's been so patient over the years answering questions as people would smirk and say, well, you know, what's up with race walking? Uh, he's, uh, he, he is dedicated, as you say. He's worked so hard for so long, so it's nice to see him get on the podium uh, this time around. Uh, Vicky, let's talk about the success of female Canadian athletes, something that Patrick mentioned. Between the Olympics now, what impact do you think it's going to have or will it have an impact on sports in Canada? I sure hope it has impact because 75% of the medals at these games went to athletes competing in women's events. And so often between cycles, as we say, we hardly see female athletes outside of tennis and outside of golf on the front pages of the sports section at all. So I'm really hoping, and I think that's why Christine Sinclair took a moment to say, look, we need a professional women's soccer league in this country. It's such a shame that we don't have it because we just don't want to see it suddenly drop and women to disappear until the next Olympics come around. Thankfully, that's in Beijing, but for the summer athletes, I hope they get more coverage between now and then. Patrick, you and I chatted for probably six or seven minutes last week on the radio about Simone Biles and mental health and high performance. I only have a minute now, but, but kind of what, what do you think the legacy will be of what she did uh, in Tokyo? Bravery. I mean, uh, I think at the end of the day, athletes are human beings and we have the right to decide that we just don't feel good and we know that we're in danger and we trust our gut. And that's what she did. And for her to, on the biggest stage with all, all the attention on her, she took the high road and passed the torch along to her teammates who came off with a silver medal and then uh, she came back on the beam with a bronze medal. And Vicky, uh, there was so much concern three, four weeks ago about COVID, about the emergence, the medical pandemic emergency in Tokyo, questions about whether these games should have gone ahead. As we look back, what's your view on that? Well, I think history will tell that and the Japanese people will, will say what they think of that. But from a Canadian perspective, not one reported COVID case from the Canadian contingent and so many wonderful moments to celebrate 
it's been a tough, tough 16 months. And so to see all this glory from athletes who could barely train, who were training in their backyards, in their basements, in their in cold hockey arenas, for Canada, I think it's nothing but a success. And uh, what about the lessons in terms of COVID for Beijing, Vicky? I think to all the winter athletes who are at home now, they know that they are training for something real. It's been so uncertain. They didn't know if they, if they even had a chance of actually competing but it's real they are ready and they will be there in beijing and i'm sure you know once again the winter athletes always do amazing things and get lots of medals so game on winter athletes right now well one of those winter athletes who did amazing things was patrick chan patrick vicky thank you very much thanks thank you, you.